Today on Houston Life, as Hanukkah comes to an end, we're going to meet the man behind the lights of the festive Hanukkah house in Meyerland. Plus, are you hosting a holiday party? The three etiquette rules you should follow and how to tackle that table setting as well. Then it is day four of my 12 days of stocking stuffers. Today, we're showing you something for the men in your life. And the holiday classic children's book, A Snowy Day, is coming to life on stage at Houston Grand Opera. Learn how the storybook was reimagined as a live stage production. All that today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life, December 6th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. That and is I'm, my name, right? It is. I know. It is you, right? I'm yeah. Courtney Savala. It's good to see you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We woke up to rain this morning. It's some pretty hard rain downtown, actually. But over the weekend, the weather was lovely, wasn't it? It was a bit warm for December, if I could be grinchy. It was a bit warm. You're complaining about the warmth? I mean, I just, I mean, I think everybody is. You know, everybody wants to just feel a little bit of the chill in the air. We're ready to wear our coat. I yeah, know. I got a mosquito bite. <laughs> you did? I did. Oh, well, no wonder you're Grinchy. I'm I sorry know. about the mosquito bite. We really felt good about wearing our shorts and our T-shirts. You know, um, Rich and Dana Lacone, two of our dear friends, you've seen them here on the show uh, doing the Botox Institute of Anti-Aging. So they've got this beautiful boat. They took us out on the boat on Saturday, and uh, Brandon well, I mean, that lunch is and dinner. Picture perfect. It was picture perfect. I couldn't believe it was December. Did but we see any dolphins or anything? Sometimes you can in the bay. You know, we didn't see dolphins, okay. but we saw a ton oh. of fish. The seagulls definitely Follow Love. the boat because it churns up uh, the small fish. But it was beautiful. We spent the night out there and had dinner and, you know, went to bed probably by 10 o'clock. So it was reasonable, but it was great to spend time with them. And then, of course, yesterday was Hanukkah. It was the eighth day. And we celebrated uh, with one of our favorites, Yuval Meichler and his wife. They threw a really great celebration. They do this every year, except for COVID. They took a year off. But Yuval and Michelle threw, you know, they had these big tents on their property and had Mexican food. So it was Lovely. a lovely. Lovely, lovely evening. Also, too warm for a coat. So we had our t-shirts on. Felt I good. know. I mean, that's why we live here, right? But great weekend to party, great backdrop, and I love everybody that you were hanging out with over the weekend. It was nice. It's been so nice to, like, get out and reconnect with some people we love. Feels so good. I that's thought for a second you took, took the boat out to the ships to pick up your online orders. No? You know what? We did see, <laughs> we parked over at Redfish Island, which is right by the ship channel, and so we saw all these container ships coming and going. So some products are on their way in. Well, or they're just, they're close. Or maybe they're almost <laughs> here, right? How they are close. My weekend was great. We we had a relaxing weekend. Friday night, um, Orlando was very excited. He was watching the University of Utah football game. They're headed for the first time in history to the, to the Rose, Rose Bowl. Bowl. They beat the pants off of Oregon, so he was very excited. I watched a rom-con, the new Heather McMahon um, rom-con on Netflix, and it is really cute. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's, it's kind of a mindless, funny, it's real cute. Uh, it's well-written. Loved it. And then Saturday, we ventured back over here to KPRC Channel 2 because Jolly O St. Nick oh, that's right. made his appearance here. Santa it was the was kids. Here. Actually, I think that's a shot of AJ's with his eyes closed, so maybe he didn't send in the right photo there. Oh, that's that's okay. okay. He was very excited. They, he and Santa had a lovely exchange, um, told him everything that he had on the list. And, uh, you know, it was it, we were sweating, but it was good. Poor Santa and all the velour and the fur. I can, you know, I feel it. But uh, it was lovely to see, and AJ had a lot of fun. Plus, he got to see another favorite of his. Oh, I know who this is. Yep, laid right down for him. Oh, little Tex man. <laughs> yeah, he loves hanging out with Tex, and Tex saw him in his little tail, and then he just plopped right down, ready for his belly rub. <laughs> Tex knows what to do, flat on he his does. back. I know. Um, and then, uh, you know, we just hung out. It was great. He was smelling. I don't know. He was smell sniffing there, um, but it was sweet. Tex was having a lot of fun in the in the courtyard of Channel Two, so it was very sweet. They do this for the kids every year, and it's lovely. That is great. That is great. Well, I'm glad they had a good time. Hey, speaking of Tex, very quick shout out. Uh, did you see? I text did. in Pet Talk magazine. And so, you. And me. I was lucky enough to accompany him Very there. Handsome. So this was shot by Allison Wilkins of Evan Thayer Studios. Big thanks to Pet Talk magazine and Regina Gust Designs, where we shot this little Beautiful. holiday scape a couple months back. And Tex, they couldn't believe it. I mean, Allison was like, are you kidding me? He knows how to look at the camera. It's like he's a robot. Yeah, he's a TV dog. He knows exactly what to do. So uh, the magazine is out now. Pick up a copy. There's some really great, uh, some 
you know, Justin Reed's on the cover from the Texans. So Logan Lester's in there next to me. So it's fun to see some of our Houstonians featured. Absolutely. It's so pretty for the holiday setting. And to go along with that, if you're thinking about adding an advent calendar to your list, I have one that you should probably pass on because it's calling it's causing quite the stir. Well, I love the a dust good advent up. calendar. Yeah, but this one's a little bit different. It's a little pricey. Um, it's $825. Oh. Uh, it's by Chanel. Hard pass. The, well, 25. Yes, by the the luxury brand Chanel. They do this apparently every year. I didn't realize they do an advent calendar. What's inside? So you know the deal with the advent calendar. You go. Well, I'm used to getting the piece of chocolate in our ad. Advent I hope calendar. there's money in this one. No, there's not. Check this out. Okay, so you asked. Just so we're back with part two. Roasting on an open fire. Okay, number eight was really calling my name until I opened it. This, I can't make this up. It's just this bag. It's just a dust bag. I yeah, the dust bag, by the way, will come with eyeshadows or something that you can like. It literally, there's a, there's a set of stickers. It's a cute box, though. It's a gorgeous box, not 825 worthy. No. It start now. This is for the the anniversary of Chanel Number no. Five, and um, it's to celebrate 100 years of this luxury fragrance. Okay. So I get it, um, and everything has the five on it, and it would start on December 5th and go through the 31st, give you these little trinkets and gifts okay. and things. There isn't one item in there that's actually worth. It's stickers, it's an empty bag, there's a lipstick, there's a teeny tiny little bottle of perfume. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. And some stickers. Well, maybe you're just paying for the name. Probably. Okay. I could, how did Chanel respond? Did they have anything have to it, say about oh, it? Oh, they blocked that, that, that TikToker. They blocked the girl. Block, yeah, blocked oh. her. Okay. okay. Well, that's one way to make friends. Very nice. I take well, my toys and move over to the next sandbox. <laughs> Listen, I was at Costco the other day. They have some great advent calendars for like 30 bucks. I love the wine one. And there's actually stuff in them. Wine, chocolate, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Hey, really quickly, did you hear about Better.com? <gasps> yes. I think it's being renamed Worse.com. <laughs> so the CEO got on this video call with 900 of their employees. Better.com, they're like a mortgage lending company. Right. So apparently they have around 10,000 employees. So 9% of their workforce, they were fired on this call. Ridiculous. So the they call, logged on, right? They logged on. The call was described as short and emotionless. And the CEO, his name is Vishal Garg. He said, if you are on this call, you are part of the unlucky group that is being laid off. Your employment here is terminated effective immediately. Just in time for the holidays. Wow. Talk about a bummer, right? Yes. People are complaining. Uh, people who have seen the call, they actually said he went so far as to say, like, hey, you've actually been stealing from the company because you've been phoning it in, only working for two hours in the day, so you're stealing from your coworkers and stealing from the company because you're a ter terrible employee. So it sounds like he kind of justified it, but, but still- there's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to unpack there. And anyone getting laid off is just bad news, but especially at holiday time, not so good, right? No, wow. Talk that about mess. bad etiquette. Right. All right, well, still to come on Houston Life, from secret Santa to gift wrapping, find out which holiday activities mm. have Americans, including me, saying bah humbug. What? I don't like gift wrapping. Oh, okay. I like it. Right now, we're, Joe Sam will be joining us a little bit later at the Houston Grand Opera this afternoon for a lovely production that's coming to life. We're going to have more on that coming up. Tis the holiday season. What is it that you can't stand to do this holiday? Is it the white elephant gift? Is oh. it the reindeer games? Which one is it? Well, I like reindeer games. I do too. They're the white so fun. elephant gift, though, it's like a lot of peer pressure because you got to go buy something, and then it's. I'm not a fan. It's like a thing. It's yeah, not a fan. I, I, see, I like the holidays. Like I love all of this fun stuff. But check this out. There are there's a list. You know, we love our surveys here at Houston Life, where a survey found that 79% of Americans don't like participating in Secret Santa. Oh, see, that does not surprise me. Really? I love a good Secret Santa. But I feel like there's the pressure. Again, you go out and you buy kind of a junky thing that then someone else is going to get that they don't want, and then you also get a junky but thing that you don't want. But so that's why are more we doing like this? a white elephant gag gift, not a Secret Santa. A Secret Santa is where you really buy something that you think somebody would like. Okay. There's a difference. 87% of people admit to re-gifting items they received oh, in a yeah. secret Santa. Mm -hmm. 52 of Americans think worst part of the holidays is this. 
wrapping the gifts. Who is this person wrapping on the screen? I don't know. This must they're, have been a before. They're giving up. It's a disaster. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to fold up the this excess wrapping. This person is way... What is happening? Using way too much. Is that like live footage of how not to wrap a gift? This is live footage from the North Pole. It's terrible. <laughs> that was live from my house. I don't, just I don't now. know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to fold gonna the extra I'm going to use the whole roll, and on, the gift is gonna this big. I'm going to tape it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lauren Kelly is here now with today's question of the day. I mean, seriously, that's I'm exclusive not video, by the way. At wrapping gifts. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Was bad. Like, if there was one thing I ever learned was how to wrap a gift. Per My <laughs> gifts will always be wrapped perfectly. The gift inside may or may not be okay, but that's besides the point. We want to hear from you guys. What about the holiday season makes you say bah humbug? And of course, we've already got some great answers coming in. Let's start over here with Carrie. She says these unseasonable. Yes, sure. But you, hey, Carrie. it's Houston. I guess it kind of has its ups and downs. We are still wearing flip flops. It is December. I will, it's okay for me right now. Rhonda says crowded stores, people blocking the entire aisle, and they see you standing there needing to get by, but they just won't move. You know, oh, yes. That's oh, also yes. kind of year round, don't you think? It can be hit or miss for yeah. sure. Weekend versus the week. All right, Kelly writes in it goes by too quickly. It's my favorite time of the year. I am right there with you, Kelly. And Jody writes, in blow up holiday yard art. Our neighborhood looks like a crime scene during the day. Oh, because they're all flattened they're all deflated. down. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little bit later on. Aside from the very, very busy malls, the I hate waiting in line, the gallery of parking. We've discussed it before. The parking makes me say bah hung bug. It's just, it's awful. It's horrible. I, I know, I know. Everybody's just out and about and mm -hmm. you feel like, where are y'all coming from? I know. <laughs> yeah, people also have no sense, right? Anyway, we'll leave it there for now. <laughs> Lauren Kelly, thank you. Sure. It's great to see you. <laughs> you too. I know, I'm trying to be nice, right? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the 1962 award-winning children's book, The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, is about a young boy who ventures out to explore the city by himself for the very first time. And now, this captivating story has come to life on stage at Houston Grand Opera. Joe Sam is there downtown with more on this. Hi, Joe. Hey guys, that's absolutely right. So a lot of people are anticipating this amazing production. They're actually inside right now in rehearsals. We're going to show you that in just a bit. But for right now, we want to talk to the director right here, Ometa, to give us information about all of this magic that's happening on stage, the beautiful voices that are going to be displayed and spotlighted through this production. How does it feel to be putting this on for everyone here in Houston? It is so exciting. So this world premiere opera, never been seen before. We're working on it right now. We transformed the snowy day, which is everyone's favorite children's mm -hmm. book, into this huge opera for everyone to enjoy. Now, I got a little sneak peek of the costumes and the performers that are going to be in here. You guys have been going through so much rehearsal. We have video of you guys actually doing all of those practice runs. Talk about the rehearsal and how challenging has it been to maybe overcome some of the things that have been put in your way. So this is the most exciting part of it. We've been working on this for years and years and years. Had to delay the whole thing for a year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But now is the part where all the magic comes together. Mm -hmm. So we've got scenery flying in and out. We've got the singers changing costumes fast backstage and we're practicing with our amazing orchestra. Oh. It's all coming together right now. And I can hear a little bit of that beautiful magic that's happening right now. We're going to let our photographer Paul head inside to show everyone a little bit of that rehearsal that's happening right now. And as everyone's on stage, look at that beautiful stage. This is something that's really, really great. How can people get their tickets to come and check out the snowy day production. All they have to do is head to the Houston Grand Opera website and they will get their tickets, but I have to say they have to do it fast because tickets are going and they're going very fast. This is going to be really great and I know you're super excited to see this all come to life. First time world premiere happening here in Houston. I know you have something to say about that. I am just so excited. And it's great that we are excited about it. We want everyone else to get excited about that too. You guys just saw that sneak peek. We're gonna give you more later on in the show. This is gonna be wonderful because we're gonna be talking to someone who's actually a part of making this all happen as well. For right now, you guys, we're gonna send it back to you in the studio. Don't go anywhere because you're gonna be giving me more information about this incredible production. Courtney and Derek, you guys saw that sneak peek in there. It is <laughs> gonna be wonderful. It looks wonderful and it also looks like a whole lot of fun. Joe, thanks for that. 
When we come back, it's day four of my 12 days of stocking stuffers. It's underway, and this one's for the boys. I'm going to share the perfect gift idea for the father-son duo. Also, do you suffer from back problems? Simply ignoring them could make things worse. The experts at Memorial Hermann will join us after the break with the warning signs to look for. Houston Life will be right back. That is right. It is day four of my 12 days of stocking stuffers. I've curated the perfect gift list that will cover all of your bases, all from local businesses to help us shop small this holiday season. Today, I'm highlighting a family business helping every man in your life look sharp no matter what age. This is a favorite of mine. I know Derek loves it as well. We are talking about Paris, Texas Apparel Company. Even my boys love this place. It's based in Houston, founded in 2012, of course, by Chloe and Paul Hotze started out by the founders in the founders garage and now they have two retail stores in Houston and of course an e-commerce site as well. Paris Texas apparel company features a great collection of men's gifts and apparel including their own t-shirt brands and Ybotas all plus 75 brands from across Texas and the U.S. They are best known for their clever Texas inspired t-shirts El Jefe, La Jefa, Body by Chips and Queso. You have had me at breakfast tacos. Those are one of their, you know, these are their signature t-shirts as well. By the way, you guys, the cotton on these t-shirts, life-changing. This stocking stuffer that we are featuring today is all about matching adults and kids. The Mama Tried t-shirts, inspired, of course, by the Merle Haggard song, and then also Johnny Cash sang it as well. These are great because they go for all sizes and they really encompass what? Mama Tried, right? We try to listen, just don't do it very well sometimes. But it's such a great conversation starter from the t-shirts to the hats. But they have the dad and me. They have mom and me. They have all kinds of really great stuff. And how to order. Of course, they have two Houston stores, Upper Kirby and Voss and Woodway. Or simply head to their website, parastexasco.com. They also do curbside pickup. But when you're there for the t-shirts, you're probably going to leave with several bags because they have they are truly one-stop shopping. Um, pick this one up. I love the hats. These are, again, my favorite. Favorites. Tomorrow, we're going to have another great stocking stuffer from a local business. And by the way, guys, if you miss any of these items, you can find them on HoustonLife.tv or you can scan that QR code. It's going to take you to the full list. Plus, have you heard about this? An opportunity for one lucky KPRC2 insider to win all 12 of my stocking stuffers that I have featured. But you got to be a KPRC2 insider to be able to win that. All right, we're going to send things over to Derek now. Okay, Courtney, save some of those shirts for me, please. All right, switching gears now. If you find yourself suffering from back pain on a daily basis, you are not alone. But how do you know if it's just normal aches and pains or something more serious? Joining us now is UT Health Spine and Orthopedic Trauma Surgeon with Memorial Hermann, Dr. Mark Prasarn. Dr. Prasarn, thanks so much for your time today. Hi, Derek. Thank you for having me. Okay, so the first question, obvious then, for a lot of people and back pain, neck pain, so, so common, how do we know when it is time to go see a specialist? Because we want to prevent long-term damage here. Great question. So neck and back pain is very common, as you mentioned. So up to 90% of people suffer from neck or back pain at some point during their lives. Um, again, it's a common ailment, but kind of trying to figure out which ones are more serious is, is a great question. Um, typically, we're concerned if it persists for an extended period of time, um, if people have tried non-operative management and failed to get to a relief, or if they have any neurologic symptoms. And what I mean by that is if they have numbness in their extremities, weakness, um, shooting pain down their arms or legs. And Dr. Prasarn, uh, Memorial Hermann Orthopedics Spine Hospital Spine Program. I feel like we're so lucky here in Houston that we have access to specialists such as yourself. People fly in to get treated here. Let's really underscore this idea, though, that, that seeing a specialist doesn't mean uh, surgery will always result. There are plenty of non-surgical options, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, and, and I see lots of patients and plenty of them are surgical, but we see lots of patients that, you know, have just had neck or back pain. And, and we, of course, try non-operative or conservative management first. Um, a lot of people benefit from physical therapy. Um, we have great physical therapy here at Memorial Hermann Ironman, and, and we typically try that, you know, first-line treatment. 
Um, we're also developing a pain program where we're integrating some anesthesiologists and some of our rehab folks to help with pain management with injections and other things that are a little bit less invasive than going straight to surgery. Let's also talk about this artificial disc replacement surgery. This sounds really interesting and you found it to be quite effective. Yeah, so, so one of the more common procedures I do uh, is a cervical disc replacement. Um, they haven't been shown to be as effective in low back uh, degenerative disc stuff. Uh, but in the neck or the cervical spine, um, a lot of times people have uh, what we call stenosis or narrowing or a disc herniation pressing on a nerve of the spinal cord. And those are good surgical candidates if they have the right symptoms. Um, historically, what we would do is remove the disc, disc and do what's called a fusion where we would fuse or weld the two vertebrae together. Uh, but now we have uh, these newer implants. Uh, it's a mobile bearing device uh, that basically you put in in place of the disc and it still preserves some of the motion. And the thought is that it'll help prevent further degeneration down the road and then potentially the necessity of needing future surgeries. What is your message to someone? I mean, let's say one of our viewers out there is waking up with this chronic pain in their back and their neck, and they've just sort of thrown their hands up and thought, you know what, this is, this is just something I'm going to have to live with. What's your, your message to them? Um, you know, I mean, I think if they have tried, you know, all kinds of modalities of treatment, like I mentioned before, like physical therapy, exercise, pain management, um, maybe it's time to see a spine specialist. Um, you know, typically the first line, you know, physicians involved with a patient with neck or back pain would be their primary care doctors uh, because it's such a common ailment. Um, and typically it's, it's, you know, treated conservatively. But I think if, you know, you've failed all measures, then maybe it is time to see a specialist. And life is short, right? I mean, your quality of life, your neck and your back, we literally need them to do pretty much anything we do throughout the day. So people do not have to live in pain every single day. Hopefully not, you know, and, and it is pretty miserable. I mean, I, I've had issues myself, low back issues. And, uh, you know, again, with appropriate non-operative management, people can get better. Let's talk uh, before we let you go too. you guys do something really cool. You give patients the opportunity to actually in a group setting, share their experiences uh, in, in the pre-op stage and also post-op when they are in rehab. Yeah, so, you know, at Memore Herman Orthopedic and Spine Hospital, again, like you mentioned, we're very specialized there. Um, we have a spine class uh, where patients come in and they meet our nurse navigator, Susan, who, who's fantastic. Um, they get to meet other patients um, and they talk about the procedure that they're going to have um, so they can kind of share stories and, and, you know, give each other advice and learn from Susan. Um, they get taught like preoperative education stuff, you know, like what to do before surgery. Um, I'm a big believer in exercise and fitness, so a lot of them are taught, you know, preoperative exercises and things to do. Um, and then, so they have the procedure and then postoperatively, you know, we treat the patients in continuity with, you know, sometimes therapy or home therapy as well. Well, Dr. Mark Prasarn, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time today. And uh, the reminder that life is short. You don't have to live in pain. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. And if you would like more information, you can visit memorialherman.org slash orthospine, or you can call 713 222 Care. Now let's send things over to Lauren Kelly, who has a look at a pretty incredible holiday light show. Lauren, you know I love this one. I love this one too, Derek. Coming up, the Hanukkah house is back this year and brighter than ever. We're taking a look at the local Meyerland home that's lighting up the whole block. Plus, we'll get a check of what is coming up for the news at 4 o'clock, including a look at your forecast. Looks pretty good right now. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday at 3.30. Yeah, now let's get more of your comments on today's question of the day. What about the holiday season <laughs> makes you say bah humbug? It's okay. Thanks so much for your honesty. <laughs> Robin writes in and says, people not having any patience or kindness when shopping. I've seen it in the past how rude people are to workers in the stores. They also would like to celebrate the holiday. So everybody, let's say please and thank you and have some patience. It's Amen. so true. I mean, don't forget, there are other people around you. Yes, everybody's hectic. Just take a moment to exhale. Miranda writes in, hearing the same Christmas songs over and over and over and over and over. This reminds me of Brandon. It's in the car, in the mall, the grocery store, the Target, at work, commercials, in the movies. Uh-oh, Miranda, you're over it. Oh, that's our Miranda Barnes. Yeah, that used yeah, to work here. used to hang with us. Hey, Miranda. Michael writes in, store displays going up after <laughs> Halloween. I know, I'm telling Poor you, St. Patrick's is almost up in stores. Listen, right? it's happening. Just wait next, tomorrow. It's going to be available. Literally, I love this. Cece writes in, literally all of it. <laughs> and scene. 
I would say the gift wrapping is still for me, I mean, I love a beautifully wrapped gift, but the problem is because we travel home typically, I then have to sit there for a few hours to wrap yeah, gifts. Yeah, I love a good gift wrap though. Uh, Oh, yeah. I do. No, it just takes too much time. What bugs you about the season? I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe not bugs is kind of a bad word. Maybe because I overindulge in everything. Eggnog. From the snacks to the drinks to the chocolate to the peppermint. Uh, I mean, I'm overloaded. <laughs> Was that bad? You just named all the good things you love about the season. I know, but then I can't stop. It's like, you know, you're supposed to do it in moderation, but I can't stop. Like upstairs, there's peppermint bark. What did I do? Ate most of it. Of course, because it's delicious. That's okay. You're and when it's, it's gone, it's gone. You know, it's the season. You can't get this in January. It's the season to forgive yourself. <laughs> I like your accent. We're all human. It just slips out once in a while. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Before we get to that, I have a feeling one of you has something that bugs you this holiday season. No, uh, that could be me. I, I, I love because this truly is the most wonderful time of the of the year. So I, for me, I, I really love it. I can't think. I mean, uh, gift, I know I love I, it. I'm, I'm horrible at gift wrapping, so I probably don't like that part. I, yeah. I just try not to do it because I I'm terrible. Mine looks like but. the cat did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that I overthink gifts for people that I love. Like I get I get a little stressed out making sure that I find like the right thing or that I do all the right things. Right. That's probably a deeper like issue that I have. <laughs> <laughs> Which we can discuss later, but yeah. I think I, I get a little stressed out trying Just to find the right thing. whatever it is, and they'll love it. I know. Well, I've done that in the past, and then what did I do this year? <laughs> when in doubt, chocolate, eggnog, wine, I mean, a yeah. puppy, they're all good. Right? Yeah. How can you get wine's always a safe shop. one. And it's, all, sure. it's, the gift, it's a thought that counts, right? So, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the so reminder. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> That's what they say. They say a lot of stuff. They say it's supposed to get cold, Frank. So <laughs> for one day. <laughs> for, that's it? For one day. Okay. okay. But it did. Look at this temperature drop we had. This was at Bush Intercontinental. 11.53 this morning. It was 81 degrees. Oh. An hour later. Goodness. 20 degree drop. Oh, wow. I mean, that's like a blue norther. I haven't seen a drop like that that quick in a long time so that really came through and now look at it after a stormy morning you know there was a tornado warning 620 this morning in Liberty County uh, but after that it's just beautiful out there and it is cooler 60 69 70 in Galveston right now if you're gonna be walking that dog you're right at 60 58 by 5 58 at 6 58 at 7 so we're gonna see those numbers cool down this is the most adorable Dog Aww. Cooper. Oh my and gosh. I love the hell head tilt. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like trying Who, to understand. <laughs> I know. Adorable. All right, there's the front that moved on through, and they've had some rough weather here with flooding and tornado warnings and uh, thunderstorm warnings there in Louisiana. We are seeing dry skies and quickly. This is clearing out nicely. We're in great shape. We're going to see a nice one as we go into the next couple of days. There are a few rain chances as this front falls apart and will start coming back as a warm front. So once we get into Wednesday, there's a slight rain chance. It goes a little higher as we move into Thursday. So all in all, pretty good. By the way, I actually took this picture <laughs> down the street and uh, and I saw in my blog today is how the Grinch stole coldness uh, and I explained why it has been so warm. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. That's in my blog today. Click teaser.com slash weather. So a Tuesday cool down, one sweater weather day, Christine and then okay. Keith were back to t-shirts. I know. But then there is another big front Saturday. I'll tell you about that at four o'clock. Okay. We can't wait for it. That's that's good stuff. It's cold now. It's gonna be warm again. I love it. I love it. Okay, thanks, Frank. Look at now some of the other stories that we are working on this afternoon. The U.S. Justice Department suing Texas over the state's new redistricting maps. The feds say the maps discriminate against Latino and Black voters. We will take a closer look into the specifics of the lawsuit and what it hopes to achieve. Plus, a story we've been following since this weekend: a Brazoswood High School football player beaten unconscious and now in the hospital. His family says says fellow students are to blame what we're learning from investigators today. The medicine your doctor prescribes could soon cost you less. President Joe Biden says he is working on a plan to lower the cost you pay at the pharmacy. We will have some of those details coming up at four and so much more. Oh, interesting. That's a bit of good news because mm -hmm. usually we see the prices going up. Yeah. We see yep. it going the other way. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you at four o'clock. Okay, so one of the things that we love about the holiday season are all the decorations, right? Yeah. You love to drive around and look at it. Listen, for the last 14 years, the Meyerland Hanukkah House and its bright lights display have continued to draw people from all over the world. Uh, lines and lines of cars. And even though Hanukkah has come to an end for the year, the whole family can continue to enjoy this festive light display. Lauren Kelly has more info on the most lit house on the block. Oh, yeah, bring it. It sure is lit. <laughs> <laughs> the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah 
Hanukkah came to an end very early this year. It started very early and it ended very early. It started on Sunday, November the 28th and ran through last night. Now check this out. My cousin Philip Grossman is the man behind the Hanukkah house located in the 5100 block of Carew Street and he puts up this massive lights display every year and he does it all for the kids. You see, my name is Philip Grossman and this is the Hanukkah house. So this all started when I was a little kid. My dad used to put up Hanukkah lights. And this is the uh, menorah I made a couple years ago. It went from just being a few strands to now all this. The majority of this is by myself. I am very neurotic. I have to have every single light bulb straight. I can't have them crooked. We got a shin and then we got a hay and then a gimel and a nun. You know, it's worth the smiles. Everybody comes by. We look forward to it. We know it's going to be a blast. We know we'll see friends. Anytime I walk outside or walk by the window, there's people outside. They're dancing to the music. It's become a family tradition. Oh, it's a big cradle. And then I like a bell. The kids absolutely love it. But it, it makes everybody happy. This is my lamaka. This is one of my new inflatables. It doesn't signify anything um, unless a rabbi wants to tell me differently. I love my show too. It's especially fun because a ton of friends show up and everybody gets out of the car. It's, this is really like a community place. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> everyone that even though Hanukkah is over, the Hanukkah house lights will remain on for the rest of this month. The address and more info is online at HoustonLife.tv. I don't know if you guys remember, but last year I told you, he yeah. declares himself as the Clark Griswold of the family. Like, he is? Yes. His wife, Dana, and his three kids do help, but he's like, no, I have to check every single bulb and oh. make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. I, I love it, and I love that the whole it's the whole festive. It allows everybody to kind of partake in that. Yeah. Um, can I get a Lamaka? I'll get you a Lamaka. <laughs> okay, cutest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Hanukkah. And those girls, too. <laughs> Adorable. And don't forget, you can push a button that has music that goes along with it. So even though there's lots of neighbors on the block, they all love it. It's a, it's a great a great thing for the whole family to check out. And super cool that even though Hanukkah is over, we can still see it for the rest of the month. You got it. All right, thanks, Lauren. And thanks to your cousin, Philip. Absolutely. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> and his family. <laughs> and they probably sit inside the house with sunglasses on, right? <laughs> I'm just guessing. So just right. guessing. I don't know, Margot. <laughs> Why does everything look so blue in here? All right, coming up, etiquette experts Monica and Darian Lewis. They are back with tips to help us navigate the holiday season. There they are. We love this couple. Stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. Of course, holiday party season is in full swing, back in full swing is what I should yeah. say, right? And from invites to table settings, if you're stressing out about how to navigate it all and correctly or properly, our next guests are here to help. Etiquette experts Monica and Darian Lewis are back with Holiday Etiquette Basics. And we always love these segments. We always love seeing you both, parents, business owners. Yes. Welcome back to Houston Life. Glad to so be back. Much. What took y'all so long? I know. <laughs> the world. We the are world. here waiting for y'all. Okay, so before we get into the basics of holiday etiquette, I understand there's a bit of a challenge you've set up for us. Yes, what are indeed. we about to do? Yes, you're going to be setting up the table within 30 seconds, oh. and then that's going to be a pass and fail, so I brought my gloves here oh, to check. Yes. So, so we're white gloves. Yep, yeah, we're going to get right to it. So we're going to do it old school style. Hands up. We're going to Above do it your like, head. Let's okay. go. Let's 30 go. Seconds. 30 seconds. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. okay. And the clock starts now. Let's go. Okay. Let's set the table up in the way you think it should go. 30 seconds on the clock. 29 and down okay. and down. And this is, a, down. this is a formal table No, this setting. is semi-formal. Semi-formal. We, we yeah, took we, it like what you got. Semi-formal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there, Courtney, what's going on, Courtney? There's so many utensils. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh, so many gosh. things to think about. Why are there so oh, many forks Why are there so many forks? Where are we at with the clock? Where are we at? Oh, why do we have this little tiny knife? <laughs> don't um, overthink it. Just set it up. I mean, is this, it's no pressure. It's just your boss coming over for a nice Wait, dinner. something's not right here. <laughs> is this a bread plate <laughs> or a dessert career. plate? Time, hands up. <laughs> Let me see. Let's How did we do? Okay, okay, okay. So both of you guys failed. Give yourself a... Wait a minute. Wait, we both failed? We both oh. failed? Well, you just missed one. I only wow. missed one? Courtney, yeah, this I am have not gone. going to expose you. I know. Yes, I missed how many? Yes. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> um, so a good way to remember, you guys have the middle plate correct. 
Um, <gasps> so, what, right. What you didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so wait a minute. You go to a restaurant and they put the napkin here. That's that, incorrect. That's, no, that is correct. Oh, oh so, so that's the one I missed. No, no listen. Will you will you let me do this? Please? Yes. Uh -huh. All right. So a good way to remember how to set up the table. Remember BMW. Okay. B is your bread plate. You have that correct. I don't know why you have this above the plate. So it's going to be on your top left. Yep. I thought it was a meal plate. No, it's not. Okay. Your meal plate in the middle okay. and water is on your right. Okay. And so any type of beverages that you have will be on your top right. So, but this is a white wine glass. So your water is always going to be behind the wine glass. Oh, that's how okay. I had it. I thought maybe yes. I was wrong. I had it like that. Okay. So another okay. rule of thumb, we have two forks. So there's four letters in the word fork, four letters in the word left. Your fork will be on the left hand side. You have that correct. Then on your left hand side, this, why do you have your butter spread over here? Well, side? where's my other knife? Uh, <laughs> I only had one knife. Well, here, here's another one. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, pass I had a that. character flaw <laughs> in, my, in my setting. I only had one knife. Well, that's why I see, thought. That's, that's exactly what should happen. When you're setting up the table, you got to go with what you have. Right? Well, that's what I did. With okay. I went with right. what I had. So I went we'll with pass little... you on that one. Yes. So your knife is right here. Five <laughs> letters in the word knife. You tried to trick Five me. Five letters in the word right. Your knife is going to go on your right-hand side. And I think he probably took it. Um, you have a spoon. Five letters in the word spoon. Five letters in the word right. Your spoon go next to your knife. And this is your teeth. Spoon. So that is correct. Any utensils above your plate is for dessert. So okay. that is correct. You okay, so remember? we weren't we weren't off. We went too I mean, bad. And a lot of people. I mean, this is a semi-formal. Semi-formal play it, setting. But a lot of people for a holiday party might just have like one spoon and one fork per person, right? What party are you going to? Oh, yeah, dear. a oh. wrong party. Yes, in a <laughs> going to the wrong party. <laughs> by animals. Okay, I like your BMW. Right. I love that. But you know how? Here's my secret. Don't tell me you do that. You're too grown for that. No, I don't do it, okay. but that's how I learned it. Oh, well, at least you remember. And, and you that's did. what I've told my kids, too. Next time, remember. Bread, <laughs> okay. drink. I'll remember that. So now that we've set the, the table yes. for our party, yes. what are things we should remember? I, I mean, and does this go for whether we're hosting the party or attending the party as well? Hosting as well as attending. So the good the rule of thumb is if you don't remember anything, always remember to work outside in. Because as a guest, you want to make sure you are comfortable talking with the people at the table, not trying to figure out which glass is mine. Right. So even if the host did not set up your place setting correctly, you should know it. Right. Okay. I always find this too when we're at luncheons or you're, you know you're at a formal luncheon mm -hmm. or an event, mm -hmm. people, you know, the tables are kind of cramped, are. right? Yes. The conversation is always is that your water glass? Or <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. It doesn't matter because e even right. if you know somebody might have shifted and right. started wrong, and so now you're just like everybody's. What off. do I do? What do I do? Right. Yeah. So when that happens, when the server comes back, just ask for another one. Or okay. if you're at a party, just go and get another glass. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. check the internet. Yeah. <laughs> And when it comes to hosting a great holiday party, it yeah. seems like starting with the right list exactly. is sort of key, right? Exactly. You want the right mix of you people. You want the right mix of people to come, people that you know are going to mesh well. That's really important. And then once you decide that you're going to have the event, send the information out as soon as possible. Texting, emailing, however you normally communicate is the best thing to do with that group of people. And here's the thing. If you're receiving the invite, mm -hmm. what's the best thing to do when you receive an you invite? You need to read it. Yes. Read Don't let it sit on read it. And then reply yes or no. Yes. Okay. But as a host, you already know we're kind of like in the middle of this COVID thing or behind the COVID. Be willing as a host to accept if the person not able to attend the day of. Understand, mm -hmm. right? Right. Things happen. Right. right. But but RSVP. You must. Absolutely. Don't just show up because we're gonna have a, a no. problem. Yes. Do you think a lot of people don't RSVP no because they're afraid of saying no? So no, they, they just trying to weigh out the RSVP? options. Which party they was gonna go to? Oh, so they oh. wait till the last minute yeah. to see if they get a better offer. Yeah. yeah, that should be a new poll as to why you. <laughs> Don't respond <laughs> because you'll find out most people are just really trying to see is your party going to be as hot as you think it is. You know, oh, wow. I, we were just chatting during commercial break. Your uh, triplets are 15. Yes. And I feel like, you know, my, my boys, I'm always constantly trying to give them the table manners and right. do all of this. Right. It's important to give them the tools to be able to go right. into the world. Exactly. They're not going to every cotillion, but no. I'm just right. saying they should be able to sit at a dinner party. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We call it being situationally appropriate. Right. Knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it correctly is so important. Okay, once we get to the party too, because we're just about out of time. Okay. So. People show up sometimes to parties, and you can tell they just don't want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. right. If you're a guest at a party, it's really critical that you mingle and, and engage, exactly. be present, right? right? Exactly. Right. Be present, be a good sport, mm -hmm. mingle, talk to people. Right. Don't be a wallflower. Don't just hang out by the buffet or, or, by, stare your phone. or, or, or yeah. sit and stare on your phone. You know, you should really try to meet new people and mm -hmm. connect with new people.
the phone thing. It. You know the phone thing. It bugs me like crazy. <laughs> if you're just going to stare at your phone all night, hey, congrats on your new brick and mortar location so yes. people can come in and learn all about etiquette from you. Yeah. Etiquette. Where's, got, what's the address? Our address <laughs> is 7026 Old Katy Road, Suite 275. We and are we so thankful that. for you guys. Look at that. Look at it's it. a beautiful yeah. space. And uh, we could go have some tea with you, right? Yes. Absolutely. Lewis uh, very own. Yes, indeed. Yes. Congratulations. Thank we knew you when, yeah. but it's so great to catch up with both <laughs> of you. Thank, you. thank you for schooling. But I'm telling you, I was given the wrong knife. And, and, you know, and she was. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was set up to fail. But it's in Just Derek's pocket. No. No, Derek, Derek, Did you steal it? Oh, oh he took it. Ah! I love y'all. Happy you. holidays. Thank great you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For more information, you can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website. That's HoustonLife.tv. Now we're going to check in with Joe Sam, who is learning more about a favorite holiday story that's turned into a stage production. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney, Derek, yeah, we're backstage right now, and this is so exciting because we're seeing all the moving pieces here at the Wortham Center to talk about how the Houston Grand Opera is putting on this world premiere of the snowy day. Take a look at the conductor. We're going to be talking about the characters that are in the actual production when we come back here on Houston Life. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey guys, welcome back here to Houston Life. You know, the Houston Grand Opera has been putting on amazing productions for over 66 years, and they're continuing to do that with the world premiere of the snowy day. You can see how big I'm smiling. I'm excited about it, and someone else who's excited about it here is Raven, one of the performers here. You're gonna be playing Peter, and this has been something in the works for such a long time. How long has it been taking you to prepare for such a production? Yeah, so we've been rehearsing this year for about four weeks now, mm. um, but we did have a like a whole workshop process last year where we worked on the music and we worked on staging um, without having to go to stage because of the COVID-19 shutdowns. Mm -hmm. So really, most of us have been living with the score for like well over a year now. <laughs> yeah, <there's laughs> I love what's happening because we're backstage right now of this production. So we really get a special sneak peek of what's going on oh, and yeah. all the work <laughs> that goes into putting this on. Talk about why this is so important for people to actually come and see this production because like we said, this is the first time it's happening here in Houston. Yeah, so it's a world premiere, and it's uh, Joel Thompson's first opera, um, and he's a great composer. He's composed other pieces, uh, but his first opera, and I just think in general it's important to see like world premieres, mm -hmm. um, new operas. Operas tend to be old when, <laughs> when people Absolutely. do them, um, and the cast is so diverse, and the team behind it is so diverse, so I think it's a great show for everyone. Opera is such a unique skill mm -hmm. to hone in on. How long have you been doing this, and being able to actually get on stage and hit the notes that you're able to hit. Yeah. This is going to be an hour-long performance, but it takes a lot to get this done. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's hours and hours of training. Personally, I uh, started singing opera right when I went to undergrad, so mm -hmm. that's been about eight years ago now. Wow. That I've been training. Super yeah. long. So you have to give me a quick little lesson. We have about 15 seconds. Okay. Give me something easy to do. Easy. Okay. Easy. You're going to sing this an octave down. Okay. And you're just going to sing. You. You. <laughs> all right, you guys, you have to come and see Raven and all the other performers. There's going to be seven performers doing different roles here at the Wortham Center here, happening Thursday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to have all the information for tickets on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Courtney and Derek, how did I do? Did I, can I perform out here? Yes, you, you, you did, did great. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I love those Good costumes ready. as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> have fun out there, Joe. After the break, a look what's coming up on tomorrow's show when we take a seat on the shelf with a special elf. Oh, looking forward to that. And as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on entertainment tonight, including an A-lister making her first red carpet appearance since announcing her pregnancy. Hey, Kevin. Courtney and Derek tonight on ET. Chris Cuomo fired from CNN, who will replace him, plus... Today was a good day. ...on the red carpet with Leo, Merrill, and a pregnant J-Law. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now sit tight. Houston Life will be right back.
Tomorrow on Houston Life, from an easy DIY mask to home remedies, see the top tips to keep your skin healthy this holiday season. And the popular elf on the shelf is moving locations again. And this time, guess where you can find him? In Sugarland, how your entire family can enjoy the magic of Christmas when our favorite elf comes to life for a holiday musical. This show looks, looks like so much fun, it's too. It's so sweet. I cannot wait. And follow their Instagram, too, because it's real cute. He's been all over the city. This year, the elves didn't appear at our house, but they're at your house, right? Oh, Elfie is, yes, and he's up to all kinds of fun stuff. So every day, he pops up in a different spot? Mm-hmm, okay. absolutely. So exciting. We got the rest of the month, too, to see where he'll end up. Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life, but it looks like we are just about out of time. We are. It is time for the news at 4 with our friends Keith and Christine. Hey, guys, happy Monday. And we are yeah. your friends, and you are <laughs> ours, and we just are so thankful for you this holiday season. Well, that is lovely, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. All righty, all righty.